Hi, welcome to Dr. Colbert's podcast. I'm Mary Colbert. And I'm Dr. Colbert. And I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a different kind of podcast today than what we've done because we're not necessarily talking about what you eat or food or medicines. This is something else that we all deal with, and that is deadly emotions. How in the world does that have to do with our health, Don? So, Mary, deadly emotions is generally at the root of most diseases I see. And I see this every day in my practice. And I've been doing what we call PK. It doesn't stand for preacher's kid. But it's, <laughs> it's a form of forgiveness therapy that we literally help the people forgive. Unfortunately, nowadays, people's church services last 30 minutes to 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. And they don't have time to go to the altar and get rid of all the... No, the parking lot's full. They got to get the next crowd in (laughs) and you need to get out. And so they don't have enough time to get rid of all the heartache and all the emotional junk and trash that they accumulate each week. So we become almost like human garbage cans full of emotional junk full of emotional, deadly emotions that accumulate and literally start to spill out and affect every area of our lives. So Christians are supposed to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, the happiest people where people should look at us and say, wow, look at that light. I will never forget uh, the patient of mine who said, one time I was in Israel and I saw this light on top of this person. And I followed that person all over. There was a light literally shining on their head. And when they got to that person, you know who it was? I know. Yeah. It's Jerry Seville. It's Jerry Seville. There's literally a light. We are supposed to be that light. And I had another person who literally this light would shine on her and Muslims would come up to her. And this was a person who worked for me. Muslims would come up to her and say, I see the light on you. What is it? She says, that's Jesus. She would smile and Jesus would flow out of her eyes, out of her mouth. And she'd lead these Muslims to the Lord. She had a ministry to the Muslims. But we're supposed to be that light. But unfortunately, so many Christians are so full of deadly emotions that the light doesn't shine out. We're not the salt. We've lost our saltiness. We've become wayside soil. And that's a condition of the heart. Or we become stony soil or or thorny soil where the word can't plant but we want that soil where the word will produce 30 60 100 fold like matthew 13 and mark i believe chapter 4 talks about the soils of the heart that's the heart we want that heart but where are we at church we are in matthew chapter 24 let's just go there and you say what do you mean why are you talking about the bible aren't you a doctor Well, let me tell you something. If we don't, the best psychology book there is, psychiatry book there is, is the Bible. If we follow these principles, this is incorruptible seed of the Word of God that'll transform your life and your mind and your body. Now, before you go to that, can I just say something? What people have got to understand is that when there is a deadly emotion, for example, blame, shame, guilt, hatred, unforgiveness, whether it's towards somebody or towards yourself. I mean, some people have deadly emotions toward themselves. They can't forgive themselves. They feel guilty. They feel a sense of shame. It's amazing to me, Don, and this was one of the things I saw that, you you know, these workshops and places that you went to that the medical science were discovering is that every single deadly emotion finds a place in the body to hide. It stores an organ. itself. Yeah, the an Chinese organ. learned this actually 2,000 years ago. This, is, this was amazing to me. I mean, folks, this is real. And they have found, like, for example, perfect example, you lose someone and you get stuck in grief and you just can't get over their death or the loss of a loved one. And we're supposed to grieve. And usually a good year for someone really close to you is very normal. You got to give people a a grace there. You're not supposed to grieve and be over somebody in a month or two months. If the the closer they are to you, the longer you sometimes need to grieve to get over them. So if you are stuck in grief and it goes on and your family sees, you know, maybe mom has lost dad and it's a year and a half and she is still stuck in that place of grief What happens, and Don has found this, 
is next thing you know, their lungs become weak because grief gets stuck in the lungs. And they're more pre, they are more uh, susceptible to pneumonia, chronic uh, bronchitis, chronic bronchitis asthma, asthma. 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 And many times Don finds is grief gets locked into the lungs and actually weakens the lungs. What I'm trying to say is deadly emotions will find its way if you don't deal with it getting locked the one thing that kind of blew me away don is women that have been raped and they can't get over shame being and blame rain, yeah. that shame blame they become more susceptible to uterine cancer and so it i think that's more than just a coincidence it's just there is an emotional component that will begin to weaken different organ points that you have found if this is not dealt with. Well, again, most science doesn't really deal with this. Most no. doctors don't. We've been, I've been doing it now for about 30 years and getting tremendous results. But the church used to deal with this at the altar. I know. Now there's not enough time. There's no altar. But we're seeing a tremendous amount of grief because yeah. so many people are dying of COVID or parents, Don, older parents are dying of COVID. And this is why we've got so much mental illness and suicide going but, on. But Mary, these are the signs of the times. And this is Matthew 24. Let's kind of paint the picture where we're going. It, it talks about in Matthew 24, verse 7, for nation will rise against nation. Well, we're seeing that right now kingdom against kingdom it says there will be famines epidemics and earthquakes in various places all these are the beginning of sorrows and then it says in verse 10 and then many will be offended will betray one another and will hate one another we are seeing in this country an epidemic of offense mary and in fact, I would dare to say that the United States is the most offended country on the earth because approximately 94 percent of the world's lawsuits are here in the U.S. And again, this is the key sign of the times that we're living in. But it's a progression. It says that many will be offended. And once you're offended, guess what's going to happen? Right on the heels of offense, betrayal. You'll betray one another. And then right after betrayal, you'll hate one another. And literally, the offense is the lighting the fuse that literally lights every single deadly emotion, which will eventually destroy your body. How will it destroy my body, you say? Well, this same stress response meant to save your life by releasing two of the most powerful hormones that will save your life, adrenaline and cortisol, if, these, if the stress response is not shut off, these same chemicals meant to save your life will start to destroy your life. Your stress response will be chronically stimulated, and this will cause you to lose your sleep. You'll lose your circadian rhythm of melatonin, and you won't sleep good. You'll lose your energy. You'll lose, your neurotransmitters will go down. You'll lose your peace. You'll lose your joy. You'll eventually invite inflammation in your body because, again, when you don't get the rest you need and you deplete these powerful hormones, cortisol is also the most powerful fire extinguisher in your body, and we don't have enough inflammation sets in. Chronic disease sets in. Depression sets in. Autoimmune disease sets in, and eventually cancer. Your immune system wears out. Cancer takes over. You are lighting the fuse for, an er for disease and an early death when you don't get rid of these deadly emotions. Now, it tells us... Now, part of it, the deadly emotions, Don, and without brushing through this so fast, is our thoughts. Oh, absolutely. It's in our thoughts, and it's in how we think. Oh, Mary, you're absolutely right. Let me give you a perfect example. I lost my sister, who's one of the closest people in the world to me, a year ago with cancer. And she, and she was your younger sister. She's my younger sister. And she was someone I used to talk to every day. And she's one of the ones I shared life with. She's the one I grew up in my childhood. And I come from a large family. But she was the sibling that I was absolutely the closest to. So her loss was devastating to me. Now, recently, and it was just over a year ago, recently we had to go back into her city to uh, do something where we're going to a sports event and I haven't really been back to that city since her death and this is where she lived and we had to go back into the city 
And Don was talking to him. He goes, Mary, I was wondering. He goes, I was waiting for that trigger because you were going into Jacksonville. And he said, I was surprised. You you were so happy and uh, you didn't display any kind of sadness or any kind of emotion. And I said, Don, you know, my mind wanted to go there. It wanted to go there and think about that, you know, she's not here anymore and, and, and you know, go down that depressive, sad road. But instead, I had to talk to myself and say, no, I've got to be excited because I'm going in to see my grandson and my son and we're going to go to this together. And this is going to be so fun what we're getting ready to do. So I literally had to make, I determined in my thoughts, no, Mary, you're not going there. And that's what's important is that you need to know you have power over your thoughts and where your thoughts go, your whole body goes. So if you are thinking negative thoughts, if you're thinking hopeless thoughts, if you're thinking, oh, God, I'm never going to find a husband, I'm never going to find my wife, I'm never going to lose this weight, I'm never going to find that job. I'm, if, if you allow the enemy to take you down that road of negative thoughts, the next thing you know, not only do you think it, you believe it. And now you have activated the wrong kind of faith in your life. You have now ignited a fire of negative faith that's going to attract that very thing you're thinking and now you believe. You, it is a war, folks. I'm just telling you, this is a spiritual warfare against you in your mind and your thoughts. So when the word of God says casting down, Vain imaginings and every thought that exalted itself against what? Against what? Not what I say, not what Don says. Against what the word of God says that you are to do. Anything that's contrary to what he tells you. He said, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever th this comes with discipline. And practice. You got to practice. And cast, learn to cast down. You yeah. have to be diligent with it. You, nobody, and you know what's amazing? Nobody else can do this for you. Nobody. You have to do this yourself. You have to make yourself disciplined that, no, I am not going to go there for the joy of the Lord and what he's done in my life, no matter how small, no matter how big, whatever. The joy of the Lord will be my strength and it will be the purpose of what I'll focus on. Yeah, exactly. And that is an important factor. Good. I didn't want to brush right over that, but I thought it'd be a good example that people are right now. They're, they're, they've got all kinds. We look at the news right now Terrible and, news. and we're Turn watching what's going on. <laughs> Turn on the good well, news. Now some of it, some of it, we can't, we can't, we ignore. have to get a little bit. We snippets. have Haiti with air earthquakes and people Death and destruction. This is Matthew 24. We have Afghanistan people trying to flee for this their lives. This is Matthew life. 24. I know. What I'm saying is we can, as a Christian, we're looking around the world, and it just feels like the whole world is on fire. Well, it's the signs of the times. That's why we've got to guard our hearts. And again, yes. this is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. And I love the Amplified Classic version. It really sheds a lot of light on it. So it says, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance. Uh, another translation says, watch over your heart. It says, above all else, guard your heart. For out of it flow the springs of life. Now, what the Amplified says, it says, above all that you guard, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. And again, if we don't guard our heart, if, it's like a garden, tend in a garden. Are you going to let thorns and thistles grow in that garden? Are you going to pull the weeds out of the garden? Uh, who is putting weeds in your garden? Who is throwing rocks in your garden? Or are you going to have the most beautiful harvest of plants, tomatoes, uh, you know, beautiful flowers? But we have to guard our hearts. We have to pull out the junk. We have to teach our grandkids, hey, has anyone hurt you today? Let's, let's tend your garden. If anyone's hurt you, let's forgive them. Let's pull the weeds out of the garden. But those offenses will eventually are like weeds in a garden. They're like thorns in a garden. They literally pollute the soil and it cannot grow and produce after its own kind. It can't produce the fruit that is needed. It can't produce the 30, 60 and 100 fold return that we want to when we have the good soil. So we have to pluck out the offense. And again, 
the, so many people nowadays are offended. This is the main thing that I see over and over in my practice. And when you, when you are offended, you are signing up for literally every single disease. You say, what do you mean? How am I getting disease in my body with offense? Well, first of all, you're breaking the number one commandment. The only commandment that we are to follow as Christians is the love commandment. And so, again, when you read about love in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 5, it says, Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. And here's the key, church. It keeps no record of being wronged. That means it keeps no offenses. And so many people are keeping record books of wrongs like the New York phone book where they have every wrong. We're to keep no record of wrong. And I love what Psalms 119, 165 says. That's Psalms 119, verse 165. It's hard for me to find the scripture, but it says, Great peace have those who love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Is that amazing? And nothing shall offend them. You say, wait, you mean nothing? What if they hurt you? What if they lied about you? What if they told all manner of wrong about you and just totally blasted you, well, again, you have been crucified with, with Christ. You are like a dead person. And I have so many, I have my good friend, Andrew Womack, who I absolutely love, love his ministry. But Andrew tells in his teachings, it's so funny, he says, I don't care what people say about me. I only care about what God says about me, and God loves me. And I don't care. And some people will go up to him. Sometimes he says and lamb blast him, criticizing him. And he said, who died and made you God? (laughs) And I just love that that. part. Well, you know, to be to walk in that kind of freedom is a very rare thing to not be controlled by what people think. It's not that you're looking to provoke people to anger or you're looking to provoke people to not like you. And if that's your motive, there's something wrong with you. But, you know, we're all to walk in the light in which God gives us with the spirit of love and mercy and forgiveness and kindness and goodness. But I'm going to tell you something. There, if you live in this life, you cannot avoid offenses. It's going to come. People are not going to like you. They're not, there's people listening to this podcast that they're not going to like this podcast. I don't care how good it is or how right. They're just because it convicts them. It sparks. Well, no, I'm not going to forgive. I'm not going to do this because I feel righteous in my anger. You know, it just people will always find an excuse and a reason for to hold on to their offenses, Don. It's amazing. But let me just tell you, God commands you, not Don, not Mary. God commands you. You don't have a choice. Right. That's part of the love commandment. He said. Keep no record of wrong. Yeah. And he said, it's real simple. So this is your choice. If you don't forgive, he you can't. You won't be forgiven. <laughs> not only, he can't forgive you. See, God's a man of his word. So I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> I need forgiveness every day. <laughs> so quickly forgive. Learn to quickly forgive. Forget. Let it go. It doesn't mean that if some horrible harm, you've been raped or a family member's been killed and murdered, all those, you know, tragic events. I don't want to Pollyanna, you know, because those are real harms and hurts. God can in time bring you to a place where you're able to, to forgive. However, consequences are real. You know, people, Jesus, he has totally covered our sins of what we've done for the life to come in which we will not have to give account for. But when you have done harm to someone else or someone has done tremendous harm to you, it doesn't mean God's going to protect you from the consequences of it. You may still have to go to jail. You may still have to pay that fine. You may still have to pay that settlement because there are consequences to severe wrongs. And but that doesn't mean spiritually you can't reach a place in your life that you actually can forgive the person. Forgiveness and being protected from consequences are two different things. Exactly. And Mary, people don't understand that Jesus taught us to forgive. But you say, you don't realize what they did to me or what they said about me or how much money they stole or they abused me or hurt me. But Jesus was clear. And he said this in Matthew chapter 6, 
right after the Lord's Prayer, he says in verse 14, he said, and this is New Living Translation, if you forgive those who sin against you, your Heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. But he also said in Mark chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, when you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your sins. And people are saying, but it's not right. God's a just God. But again, where God is clear, Jesus is clear. If, if Since he's forgiven us an unpardonable debt, we are to forgive anyone whatever they've done against us. You can see this in Matthew 18 with the king who was settling his accounts. And one owed an, a great debt that couldn't be paid, and the other just owed some denarii, which was equivalent to three months' wages. And so he forgave the one that had the unpardonable debt, but the one that had the unpardonable debt would, would not forgive the one who had the minor debt. And so that one who had the huge debt had to go back before the king. And then you know what happened? He turned him over to the tormentors, to the torturers. What are torturers? Those are the diseases you are unknowingly signing up for when you That's refuse to forgive. For people to hear. What are those? The torturers are the cancer, the arthritis, the unquenchable inflammation, the burning pain throughout your body, the fibromyalgia. Many people with fibromyalgia, and you know who you are, and I see these every day, you have offenses. You have not, uh, you have literally carried those offenses with you and you've not released them. You've kept a record of wrong. Many with fibromyalgia have a huge record book of wrongs, but they did this to me and I, they hurt me. They And these may be legitimate issues. We're not denying the fact but that But by not are, forgiving, yeah. you are signing up for that pain, for those diseases, for many times the high blood pressure. Why? You say, what do you mean? How can unforgiveness cause high blood pressure? When you are unforgiving, the same stress response meant to heal you starts to destroy your body by constricting your blood vessels. When you constrict blood vessels, it can raise your blood pressure. When you constrict blood vessels in some people, it causes tr severe muscle spasms in your muscles. That's how we're designed. Remember, the stress response meant to save your life by enabling you to fight or flee, and then it turns off, will start to destroy your life when it's not shut off properly by constricting blood vessels, leading to uncontrollable muscle spasms and pain. What's happening? It's real simple, church. A lot of people, when they're stressed, their muscles in their shoulders, neck, trapezius muscles get tight. They don't relax. When they get tight, those arteries that feed those muscles constrict, and then they don't get the blood flow in those muscles. Then you get ischemia. Ischemia is decreased blood flow, which causes pain. And then you get waste material that collects and accumulates. Well, what I do so for so many of these patients with chronic unforgiveness and chronic muscle spasms, we get them to forgive. After forgiving, and we do it through a process called forgiveness therapy, then those muscles relax. They go into a state called the yin state or a parasympathetic state. We call it the relaxation state in which the muscles relax, the blood flows normally. I have seen people's blood pressure drop 40, 50 points after this. I have seen muscles relax in people with fibromyalgia for 20 years. Their muscles are amazingly relaxed and their pain is totally gone. It's amazing how this works. I, and that's why I call it forgiveness therapy. We've been practicing this for over 30 years. Very few people know about it. It's something the church should have used to do by you know, teaching people how to forgive. But now the church doesn't have time for this. I know that's the saddest thing to me is that the church really isn't operating in the way I believe the Bible says we're supposed to be operating. If you had a really healthy operating church, if something's gone on, you should be able to go to one of the pastors or the pastor and say, you know, such and such has happened that goes to your church. And then they bring them in and they do the, you know, Matthew 18 and say, 
come on, let's 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 get to the nip, you know, butt of this and let's see if we can't bring peace. But I'm just telling you, so many of the churches do not want to be bothered with that anymore. They don't have time for counseling. They don't have time to teach people, hey, how to let it go. It makes me so sad. And so we want to teach you so well, many diseases. Well, that's what we're going to do, Mary. So yeah. we're going to get into diagnosing the offense. OK, is that's it you? In the next podcast. Yes. Is it you? Is it the other person? It's usually both of you. And again, if you're the offender, it's usually both you and the other person because you, you may have offended them, but they may have reacted and spewed out a lot of hate and a lot of, you know, many times we lose our cool. And as a result, all you become part of the problem. So we're going to diagnose this problem. We're going to show you how to diagnose this and, and how to spiritually through the word yes. of God, correct it. It's so That's easy. The, the, next bi- podcast. the Bible teaches us how, how not a psychology book or a psychiatry yeah. book. Now go to drcolbert.com. That's our website. Dr. Colbert has a book that he wrote years ago that still is. Well, it's current. updated now. It's just up updated it's last amazing. year. Yeah. Yeah. It's called Deadly Emotions, in which he talks about. So if you know somebody who is just wrapped up in a bunch of deadly emotions, you think you can't get, reach them, the book might. So you can go to our website at drcolbert.com. When you can become a partner with us in our ministry of what we're trying to do, just simply go to our products that we have. We have multiple different products. And when you sign up for auto ship on a monthly basis, that helps us do what we are doing, and we have a big list of things to do in the next year, and we appreciate your help in us spreading the good news of walking in divine health. God bless you, and have a blessed God day. God bless you.